Hello! If you, like me, are tired of getting this uh, 1S UR65 to fly as smoothly as fast as possible, and you want something a lot better, then uh, stay tuned because we're gonna painstakingly take this apart to create something much, much faster. And you're gonna learn. No, no, that's that's the other guy. Whatever, just just watch the video. So here's the stuff that you're gonna need. Uh, first, obviously, uh, UR65. That's gonna be the basis of our project, or well, the main parts that we're gonna use. Then we're gonna need a Mobula Seven. I'm using the uh, V2 frame, Mobula Seven V2 frame. Uh, then we're gonna need. A little uh, camera mount, a little rubber um, thingy <laughs> to uh, change the battery from the regular 2S batteries from the for the Mobula to convert it into a 1S battery like that. Uh oh. Then we're gonna need a tiny whoop canopy, and finally, uh, actually not finally, uh, some uh, 40 millimeter gem fan props, and now finally 802 uh, motors. I mean, I'm using the uh, Beta FPV 17 um, 1700, well 1750, 17500. 17,500. Yes, words. So we're gonna need four of these, and uh, we're gonna start by obviously eh, assembling the motors. So, yep, there you have it, all motors assembled. Nice and tight there in the frame. And you might notice that I have some grommets already in place, and that one is bigger than the other three. So this first is gonna be the uh, four one, and this is solely to make the flight controller raised uh, a little bit at the top. It doesn't really matter. You can you can level it out afterwards in uh, beta flight. But the purpose for that is because when we install the flight controller, they were removed from the uh, UR sixty five, and we put this here on top. It's gonna automatically raise the camera level. Now you can do this in other ways, you can just get one that's already tilted back, but I find this the easiest way. Uh, anyways, so we're gonna move into the camera part, which you will need to unsolder for from the flight controller and then take from, eh, take from, from here, take it, take it out, it out there we go uh, now as you might see there are a few connections here that attach the two boards and what we want to do is we want to separate the boards from one another yes 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 so we're gonna need the total of six cables connecting one board to the other and then two cables um, come out well actually four cables come out uh, to power the transmitter and the camera and to allow video and um, video in video out this actually this camera has one extra cable which is for uh, to change the um, change the channel camera remotely through through the remote control Duh. but normal you are UAVs just bring the regular camera this is the special edition It's the uh, UK or US 65 so that's why it has the extra bit here so I've already done the separation in another camera that I have and this is a regular camera from a UR UAV it will be exactly the same for this and the cables that you're gonna need to chop off 
if I can show it here, are only four cables. Well, uh, yes, four cables. This will actually be the fifth is for the, uh, on this type of camera, the fifth is what changes the channel, which is going to be the green one. Yeah. So for a regular camera, you're going to break the side plates very carefully. Now this is going to void your, vor void your <laughs> warranty. So just make sure you do it very carefully. If you don't know what you're doing, don't try to do this. Just buy a camera that's already separated. But if you want to use this camera, go right ahead and chop off the uh, this parts that connect both cameras. Now, there's only, to my knowledge, that I've done here, there's only four cables that need to be connected and they're all on the left side of the board, or well, depending on what side you're looking at. If you're looking from the back, it's only on the left side uh, that the uh, connections need to be. And it's one here at the bottom, that one. So that transfers the, uh, I guess the power to, to power up the camera. And then the first three there at the top. So when you chop this part off, you're gonna connect the first three as they were, and then the bottom one. And then this one, you just connect, you leave it here and you connect it to uh, your flight controller to change the channel. And if you don't know how to do that, just watch the other guy's videos. He'll teach you how to do that. Uh, all right. Hopefully that explains exactly what I've done. Focus, 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 focus. No focus, focus, no. There we go. So there's only four cables on the left hand side that connects one to the other. And then obviously the camera will go like this. So we're gonna mount the this uh, receiver on our little um, camera mount that we have here. And what I like to do in order to make sure that this is all secure is to use some uh, double-sided sticky tape to put on one side and then to connect to here. And it also prevents any type of um, shorts that you might have well here's the tip when you're soldering the cables you can leave the existing cables already on one side and then you can just solder the new connections uh, directly on the other side yeah so you don't have to melt this off you can leave it as is right so let's put the flight controller the camera uh, connected and again the connections are exactly the same uh, as you had before power five volts video in video out and you just connect that again as you had before on the previous board uh, to the bottom side of the flight controller so when we put all of this there you go the flight controller is now assembled with the camera mount on top it's all ready to go motors are connected all we need is now the canopy and obviously the props and to check if the motor rotation is fine and to do more configurations in better flight and we getting ahead of ourselves. Anyways, for the flight, for the flight controller, for the <laughs> canopy, you're gonna notice that it doesn't wanna go in. Not a problem. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna chop these tabs right off because we're not gonna need them. And we're gonna poke a couple of holes with our soldering iron right there on the edge Boop. and that is how we're gonna attach the flight controller to the board all right so we have the screws here now and the top frame this is the complicated part that i hate i absolutely hate and you kind of have to line up the camera to this thing and then slot the screws in the camera thing. Oh, God. oh, I actually made it. First try? No way. And then you just secure 
those screws to these slotted holes just underneath. Like that. Hmm. And if you've done everything as I commanded, you should now have the flightest, the flightest, <laughs> the fastest Tiny Whoop 1S that exists in the world or even in other worlds. So, you're ready to fly? Uh, I'm gonna post my dump that I'm currently using for this. Uh, just check the comments for that. And uh, more importantly, I'm gonna show you the magical secret that nobody knows if you want to race these. Now, this is gonna be obscenely fast, obscenely fast for a 1S. And if you're gonna race with these on door, indoors, you're not gonna be able to control it because it's just gonna be every throttle that you're gonna give to it, it's just gonna go explode in the uh, ceiling right away. So there's a couple of things that you're gonna have to do on your radio. You can choose to select or to create a different model. Actually, that's what I've done. Uh, but the important part is to make sure that you're putting the right values on the right places. And I'm going to show you now. Yeah. Yes, look at that. Perfect. Um, the whoops is my mode. So when I go onto it, there is a couple of things that I've modified. And that is in the mixer, in the channel mixer. I'm not sure if you can see that, so I'm going to post I'm going to take a picture of this and just post it over it. So what I've done is I've reduced the throws that you have for uh, aileron by 30%. I've reduced the elevator by 93 because obviously you don't want to roll too much when you're in a race, but you still want a full pitch or almost full pitch. At least that's what I have. And then for the throttle, this is for the something like this, but a bit, a little bit heavier. I've reduced this to 85. Now for this, if you're doing the exact same model as this, you're probably gonna have to reduce it to 50 in order to race properly with this. Cause believe me, this is way too fast for 1S indoors. Uh, it always depends on the uh, um, course that you're doing, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a little bit on the insane side. So if I edit, you'll notice that when you reduce the weight, just remember to reduce the uh, offset as well. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to arm because it reduces the, uh, when you reduce the weight, the force that you have on the throttle, it reduces from both ends. And you can't do this from beat of flight either. You have to do this on the radio. So that is my magical trick alongside the pits. Well, not really. The pits that are, are almost from, um, from, um, the latest firmware that I applied to this. So, um, yeah, I, I was using 3.5 before. I have a UR UAV as well. Take a look at this video here if you want to see more about it. Uh, well, here, probably going to pop up something here showing you a link to the other video. Uh, but aside from that, try it, see how you like it. What? You're telling me that you would like to see how this flies right now? All right, I'll show you. And here you go.
that was that. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you do, remember to leave the likes and the, the, the things and the clicks and all the things that you have to do on the internet uh, so I don't get kicked out of the YouTubes. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe? You're here, you click the button and then you are subscribed like magic. And there's also more videos and stuff. And probably. And there will be other videos. Maybe. If I feel like it. Bye!